What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome to our devotional series. You're going to start your week off right, going to start your day off right. Let's do this. Uh, we are still in them red letter words. We're in Matthew chapter 19, but real quick shout out. Boom. I'm rocking that NB Kids t-shirt. Uh, our children's ministry just got some new t-shirts for their volunteers. And uh, man, great ministry. If you're looking to get involved, great group to, to connect with. My kids get involved. My kids were in it. It's, it's a cool thing, man. So uh, shout out to our NB Kids group. Uh, real quick though, let's just dive into them red letter words. Um, they're actually words that we kind of referenced yesterday. If you missed the sermon yesterday, kicked off a new relationship series called What Happy Couples Know. Um, and, and we talked about how like Jesus was asked about divorce. Um, and in his response, we talked about how like there was a divine ideal. He goes, it, it, there was a divine ideal from the beginning that when God put two people together, that they stay together, faithfully committed to one another. Like that's the divine ideal. And they ask him a good question. They're like, okay, well, if that was what God's divine ideal was from the beginning, why did, and this is verse seven, why did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and then send her away? Now here's the red letter words. He goes, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not so from the beginning. So today I just want to talk to you about that idea of like uh, divorce. It, it really flows out of a hardened heart. You know, eventually one person or both, their heart becomes hardened towards another people. Like I'm done. I can't handle it. I'm out. He's out. She's out. Whatever it is. But that's true of all of our relationships. That, that That's true of life even. That eventually, if we're not careful, we can develop a hardened heart. And when I think about what probably is the most likely cause of hardened heart, usually it comes into what I would just call repeated wounds, repeated hurts. If somebody says something to you enough, eventually your heart gets calloused and you get bitter and angry. You know, if somebody does something to you over and over and over again, you get bitter, you get angry. Somebody doesn't do what they're supposed to do and there's some real unmet expectations. You're just so disappointed all the time that finally you just quit and don't give up. And you, can't. And this can, you know what, funny enough, we can get a hardened heart towards our Heavenly Father. If God doesn't do what we expect him to do or think he ought to do or life doesn't go our way. And so even, even the sufferings of this world sometimes cause pain in our heart and that pain hardens our heart. And really what that does is once our heart is hardened, that starts destroying all of our relationships, again, including our relationship with God. And so, um, and I thought about this, what, what is it, God, that, that really helps us overcome that hardened heart? And I really believe it's this. It's a overwhelming revelation of the love of God. That when I think about God's love, that his unconditional love, meaning he loves me regardless of how I perform or regardless of, uh, regardless of how I behave, that God is love, that the cross is the greatest reflection of that love, that God loves me. I mean, it's that's the thing that begins to overwhelm me. And what happens is I think that the love of God penetrates your heart in such a way that it's the thing that could actually break up that hardened heart. And if my heart could be so full of the love of God, then when it comes to the, even the people, um, that hurt me or wound me, maybe even just then I can still love them even as Christ loves me. I'll give you a scripture that I think kind of supports what I'm saying here. It's Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, we glory in our sufferings. Now think about that. The sufferings could be the things, the repeated pains and wounds and things that we're having go on that could harden our heart. He said, but we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance is character, character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I think what Paul's saying here is this, is that we can be different because of the love of God. We can be different. See, I think most people, if they experience suffering or pain or repeated hurts or whatever it is, it's like, no, you're just going to get angry and bitter. But what if we were different? What if we could take that suffering, that pain, that hurt, and turn into perseverance, and that perseverance develop a, a, a new character trait. And inside that new character trait, there'd be an unbelievable hope. And you know where that all comes from? It comes from the love of God that was poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want for all of us today. If we have any area of our life where we feel like, I feel like my heart is getting hardened towards my kids, towards my parents, towards a friend, towards towards God even, towards a spouse, whatever it is, we want to protect and guard ourselves against a hardened heart because at the end, that ends up messing up all of our relationships and actually, I think, helps uh, with the, the disconnect that we feel from our Heavenly Father. And so we want to open the floodgates back up. And let's, let's pray about that today, as a matter of fact. Heavenly Father, we need, God, that overwhelming revelation of how much you love us, of how loved we are, so that, God, we don't give in to the repeated hurts and wounds that are surrounding us. And, and God, we can stay so full of hope 
so full of your love that we can even pass that love along to other people. Lord, help us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.